Hello everyone, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. Thank you so much for clicking on this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make a gorgeous wrap. Okay, or some call it a pocket shawl. Um, whatever you want to call it, it's a, it's a beautiful um, piece to have and I'm going to make it with Bernat Super Value Yarn. The colors are taupe, forest green, and topaz. I use, and each of the balls have 197 grams for those of you who need to have the grams, okay? I use two balls of the dark, two balls of the mid-tone color, and two balls, of, or and pardon me, and one ball of the, of the light. You hardly use any of this light one. You'll have about a quarter of a ball left of each of the other two as well, okay? So um, we're going to use our 46 needle machine, but you, if you have a 48 needle center, um, that's perfect as well. Just follow along the same exact pattern, okay? You're going to need to um, get a couple buttons. Now I bought my buttons at um, Fabricland, they're just wooden buttons, but you can get them at any craft store. Or if you have an old sweater with vintage buttons on it, or um, if you're secondhand shopping, find an old sweater with vintage buttons. I wished I had done that actually. And cut off the buttons and use them. That would just be beautiful on this. Um, okay, and so what we're gonna do is, what this is, how we're gonna wear this is what I'm trying to say. It's just around your shoulders like that, okay? I got such staticky hair right now. And, and there it is, we're gonna, it's just like a beautiful, beautiful piece to put on. You can wear it with dress pants, you can wear it with jeans. Um, just throw it over your shoulder. These pockets, um, this comes off so you can put your chapstick in there or your Kleenex or your phone or whatever you want to put in there. Um, works for that too. So you can wear it like this. Um, you can wear it now. <laughs> some of you are gonna laugh, but there's some of you out there that are, are, are really um, good at getting uh, fashionable and, and I'm sure that some of you will wear it like this. I likely won't because I'm not fashionable, but, <laughs> but I try. And, and uh, like, I just, like if you're out for a walk and it's windy, you throw it over your head and it's still warm and you've got such a beautiful look um, and you can wear it like that or you can just wear it like a, like a long scarf, bring it up over onto your shoulder so it's not, um, it's not going over your shoulders and you've got your jacket on or your jean jacket, whatever you have and throw that on top, just like that. Um, and wear it as a scarf. So many options for you to use. Um, when you're sitting on a couch watching a movie and you're a little co you know, cool or you're reading a book, um, throw this over your, over your legs as a blanket. It works perfect for that. It's like just the right size um, to just give you a little bit of coverage. Um, so many options for this baby. <laughs> I just love it, it's so beautiful. Okay, so um, grab your, your machine, grab your yarn, um, put your hair up so it doesn't get all staticky like mine is, and uh, let's get started, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you make one for yourself. Um, if you do, please, please, please show it to us in my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks, um, and uh, let us see your color variations that you've made. Put it on, be brave, I'm brave, so you can be brave. Be brave and uh, put it on and let's see what it looks like and uh, share your inspiration with us because this would be great in so many different color variations. Okay, so have fun my friends. Thank you for joining me. Um, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and come on over and join my Facebook group if you haven't done that either. So we'd love to have you as a part of that group over there. It's a wonderful community of crafters and, and uh, and you'd be just the perfect fit in there as well. So um, get your supplies ready and let's get going. All right, so if you have your yarn ready and your machine set up, let's get started. Um, we're gonna need waste yarn for this project. So grab a color of waste yarn that's in contrast to um, the colors that you've chosen for your scarf um, and bring your last white and your first black needle in line with our yarn feeder. We're going to do a long tail cast on by going behind that first black needle in front of the next behind and in front all the way around now when I'm putting waste yarn on I just let it slip through my fingers I'm not putting any tension on this um, any more tension than what it takes to just hold it okay and so we're gonna go around now for me I always do seven or eight rows of waste yarn I'm gonna put that in my feeder and then I'm just gonna crank out the desired amount that I need so whatever you're comfortable with um, but the, the waist yarn at the beginning of the project holds really, really well. Um, it's, the, it's the waist yarn that you use at the end of the project that sometimes will unravel. So um, it's not necessary to have an excessive amount of, of rows at the beginning of your project. Um, so you do whatever is comfortable for you, but I'm going to do seven. Or however many it takes 
before I run out of yarn in this little piece that, <laughs> that I'm reusing. Okay, so I'll just keep washing it, make sure I don't run out. Okay. Here we go. And let's see, this will be my last one. So I don't know if this was six or seven, but I think it was seven. Okay, so I see that marked black um, divider coming around. So I know that my what, last white needle and my first black needle are on their way to the front. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to now take that um, waste yarn. I don't have uh, a full row left, but I have a little bit too long on there. So I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to put that yarn in between my last white and my first black and we're going to grab our first working color okay all right so we're going to set our row counter to zero generally I do that halfway around the last row of waste yarn but I forgot um, so as long as uh, as we have it ready before we begin our first row we're okay so I'm going to take my dark taupe color I'm going to put that into the yarn guide and in between the last white and the first black I'm going to hold these two tails I'm going to knit four Four needles then I'm going to pull on this and that tightened it up in there and I actually like to push that one down underneath there too and that tightened it up so that when um when I keep going then these first few needles at the beginning of my project aren't going to be looser tension than the rest okay so I'm going to um actually grab my my um tensioner and I'm going to put this yarn in that little hole that's at the top of that feeder I'm going to put my tensioner in and I'm going to use the second for the middle one okay so the middle tensioner uh, for this project and I'm going to go ahead and for this first color whatever your color choice is that you chose you're going to do 33 rows okay okay this is a little tight coming out of my ball so I want to loosen that you're going to do 33 rows of that so you're going to just do a straight knit like this sorry I'm all tangled up here. a straight row like this until you get 33 rows done so because I set my counter before I started my first row it's going to click on row 33 and I'm going to finish that row okay so taking whatever color you chose to do first you go ahead knit 33 rows and when you get to that um, place and you finish your 33rd row come back and see me and we're going to change colors all right so I did 33 rows and I'm going to cut that yarn end I'm going to open the feeder put it between the last white the first black and that was my darkest color that I started with. Now I'm going to take my, my mid-tone color, the one that's uh, the middle shade lighter. Uh, or, yeah, the middle shade of the two. So I have a dark, a mid-shade, and, and a light. That's how I look at them. Okay, and so now I put the, the green in there. I'm going to knit four needles. Then watch this one here. I always pull that until that goes down under there. Sometimes I help that one too. Then you're going to tie a firm knot because this is your um, permanent color that's staying on so we want to have it hold okay and I am not going to reset my counter I'm just going to knit until I get to row 99 and then from um, I'm going to finish row 99 and then we'll do another color change okay so um, basically what it is is 33 rows for each square so this is one square and then I'm doing two squares of this second color so um, we did 33 rows of the first one and then we're going to do 66 of this one so that's 99 so keep going until you get to row 99 and when you get to 99 finish that row and then see me back we'll do a color change um when i get to row um about 100 or pardon me about 55 as soon as it starts to touch the the table i'll come back and show you how i roll that up into a donut okay and i did take my tensioner off i was finding for this yarn that uh it's better if I just let it just slip over my finger like this as it's uh, going through the, the yarn feeder there, okay? So I'm going to keep going till I get to row 99. I'm going to finish row 99, and then I'll see you back. Actually, I'll see you back once I get once it touches the table, and then I can uh, show you what I do. Okay, so my work is touching the table, so I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to take those ends out so that I can tuck them under there. And I'm going to just roll it up just like this okay and that prevents it from having slack when it's when it's bunched up on the table it pushes up like this and then you could drop a stitch here if this um, loop fell off the red teeth then um, you would 
um, drop a row, okay? Start dropping a row until you catch it. And so this will, will help prevent that. It'll also help keep the tension um, even around the barrel as you, as you knit. So um, when it keeps that tension even, then the, it helps to keep these, these loops over this, these red teeth. So that's why we do that. So I'm gonna continue on until I get to row 99. And I'm gonna finish row 99 and then I'll see you back. Okay, so I finished row 99. I'm gonna cut off my tail, put it between my last white and my first black. Then I'm gonna grab my dark color again, my taupe, okay? And we're going to do 33 rows of this, which will bring us to row 132 on our counter, okay? So same deal. You put your end in between the last white, first black. You're gonna knit three or four stitches. Then you're gonna pull that. To tighten it, you're gonna tie this off in a tight knot, then I always cut this off to a few inches, a couple inches. And we're going to go ahead and we're gonna knit until our counter says 132, and we're gonna finish row 132 with this darker color, okay? So keep going, and you roll this up as, as it keeps getting longer, you just keep rolling it up into a tube, just like that. And you keep knitting, okay? Making sure there's some slack on your yarn. Um, okay, there we go. All right, so keep going till you get to row 132. And when you get to 132, finish that row. I'm getting all tangled in yarn. <laughs> finish that row and I'll see you back. Maybe it's time I stop for a cup of coffee. <laughs> all right, so keep going and I'll see you back at row 132. Okay, so how's it going? Um, getting a pretty big donut up there so far, but it's going to get a lot bigger. So <laughs> um, let's cut off that yarn tail, put it in between the last white and the first black. This is the first time we're going to introduce our lightest color. So I'm going to take my um, lightest color there. I'm going to put it into my yarn feeder. Do the same as I always do. Crank out four needles. And then I'm going to pull that tight. I am going to tie this off in a knot. I've crocheted pocket shells before. I have a beautiful pocket shell that I that I love actually, and, and I've been waiting to do a uh, knitted one. Um, I've been wanting to do one for a long time, so now's that time and I'm so excited about it. Okay, so we just finished row 132, and uh, now we're gonna knit until we work 33 rows of this light color, and our counter says 165, okay? But we're going to finish row 165. So once it clicks on 165, finish that row. And, uh, and then I'll see you back, okay? All right, so my counter says 165 and I finished that row. It's just getting ready to click on 166. So I'm gonna cut that yarn, put it in the center there. Then I'm going to check my chart here and I'm gonna choose my darkest color again, okay? gonna have to change balls soon okay um because this wasn't a full ball and i'm going to insert that into my yarn feeder into the center knit four needles give that a little pull tie a knot cut it off and i'm going to knit till I get to 198 and I'm going to finish row 198, okay? So keep going till you um, complete up to row 198 on your counter. That's 33 rows of this dark color, okay? And I'll see you when you get there. Okay, so I finished row 198. I cut off my end. I'm gonna put it in there just like we've been doing all along. And I'm going to take my mid tone color, which for me is my green, and we're going to put it in there and we're going to do 66 rows until we get to 264, okay? So until we get to 264, we're going to uh, knit with this green color, okay? So I'm gonna pull that like what I always do. Oh, I just went upstairs and I washed some fresh blueberries. Well, fresh that I bought at the store. 
made some whipping cream and had blueberries and whipped cream. So if that inspires you to go have a snack, <laughs> that's a good one to have because, oh man, it was so good. So there we go. So I'm going to knit until I get, let me just check again, to row 200 and, oh my goodness, it's too far for me. Let me see. I already told you, but I'm going to look again because I don't want to make a mistake. 264 okay so i'm gonna knit, knit until i it clicks on 264 then i'm gonna finish that row and uh and then i'll see you back and we're almost done look how big our donuts getting okay that gives such great tension if i could only keep this ball from i've got too narrow of a little area here that i'm sitting in it's uh catching all the time so i need to to fix that okay but my machine is working like a dream since i cleaned it all right, so keep going and I'll see you back when you get there. All right, so I finished that. I'm gonna open my latch, put that between the last white and the first black, which we um, have been doing all along. And we're gonna do our last um, part of it, our last color change. We're gonna add our dark color. So I'm gonna add my taupe. I'm going to do three or four needles. It's just the repetitive thing, same thing we do. Look how big my donut's getting. It's uh, nice and squishy and soft, and I'm going to cut that off. And now I'm going to finish this last part, and I'm going to go till my counter says 297. And I'm going to finish row 297, okay? So you keep going, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to finish off this beautiful panel, okay? So keep going till you get to 297, finish row 297, and see me back. All right, so I just finished row 100, pardon me, 297. Got a big, fat, beautiful donut here. I'm gonna cut that yarn, put it in between my last white and my first black needle. I'm gonna change to my waist yarn, okay? So make sure it's a contrasting color so you can see your stitches easily So we, when we close our ends, okay? And I'm gonna put that in there and I'm going to knit seven rows of waist yarn or however many you're comfortable with. Um, this end piece is um, one that unravels really easily. So um, if you're gonna set it aside and it's gonna get jostled around or anything like that, do 10 or 12 rows. But otherwise, my handle, I tell you. <laughs> it's, it's actually working very, very well. Um, but every once in a while, I'm, I'm hearing it grind again a little bit, but that's only because I'm struggling with keeping my yarn um, loose tension here on my lap. Okay, so I'm going to loosen that really well here. And I'm gonna finish seven or eight rows of waist yarn. Just like so. Or until I run out of, of yarn here because I uh, this is a piece that I've used before and it looks like it's coming to the end. So I'm gonna just let it run out. Um, it doesn't have to end up in between the last white and the last black. It's just gonna end up where it ends up. And then I'm gonna keep turning and it'll turn twice and then it'll start letting go. See, now it's gonna start letting go, okay. As I go around the second time, it lets go and the weight of that donut is helping it off. This one missed and this one here is snagged. So there we go, we have our donut off um, and we're going to make a flat seam on both ends. But uh, before you do that, why don't you just set this aside? Doesn't that look so cool? Set it aside and um, make another one exactly like this, okay? So we're gonna need uh, to go ahead and, and uh, I hope you wrote down your row count. So go ahead and make another one exactly like this. Um, actually, we're going to make two more exactly like this. Uh, you can you can stop at two if you just want, um, like the crochet uh, pocket shell that I have is double the width of this. And um, and I love that too. And I'll show you that. Um, I've showed you that at the beginning of the, of the video. But for this particular one, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make three panels that are exactly like this one, okay? And so um, I've got one more to make because I, I made one before I, I went on um, camera with you to make this one. So go ahead and do this exact same thing till you have two panels if you want a, th a thinner pocket shawl and three panels if you want a, a wider one, okay? Not thinner, a narrower one. And three panels exactly like this if you want a wider one, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make one more so that I have three and I'll see you back. 
All right, so I'm sitting here drinking a cup of coffee, just relaxing, looking at that beautiful little donut that's on the, on the table there. <laughs> Getting ready to stitch up the ends, okay? So uh, once my coffee is finished, then I will grab my crochet hook. Doesn't really matter what size you grab. Um, I'm going to probably use my five millimeter one. And I'm going to begin stitching up the ends of this beautiful little donut that was fading out before our very eyes <laughs> as my camera was um zooming in on my on my pajamas <laughs> but anyways um grab your your crochet hook and let's begin sewing up our ends all right so before we do that we have to unroll our donut it's a little tricky there we go. I want to make sure that you unroll it so that the right side is out. Okay, so we're going to unroll it. I think since I fixed my machine, well, I know since I fixed my machine, I've done three of these panels of 297 rows each, and I um, tucked two stitches in the whole thing. Um, and that's because I was fighting with my yarn a little bit, but... Um, anyways, I'm going to stretch it out. So I think 297 times three panels and only two tuck stitches is incredible. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stretch it both ways. Okay, and that helps to soften up my, my um, project. And uh, this is one area where it was tucked. No, that was a... Uh... Yes, and then I, I sewed it back up, so I'll be playing with that to get it even okay so by pulling on it by um, stretching it it makes it uh, more beautiful lines up your stitches softens up your fabric and uh yeah you just got to do that all right so let's take a side we're going to untie that little slip knot thing that we made there at the beginning and we joined our waist yarn okay now you're gonna just look for that first stitch where your waist yarn is coming out of and we're going to put a stitch marker in there okay then we're going to look to the left of it and you'll always see on both sides that there's one on top of the other that's directly across from when you see the one that looks like it's just got one you look directly to the left and there's always looks like there's one right on top of the other well there is one on top of the other here too but it looks like there's just one row and then you're going to put your your um stitch marker in that top one there and this is going to be 46 and this is number one Okay, and then we're going to count around because we know that there's 46 needles on here. So we're going to look for 46 little loops that are um, in our waist yarn there. And I'm going to count this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 are exactly the far side. Okay, so I'm going to go under 24. Then I'm going to pick up 23, put it through the loop on my hook. So that's two stitches work. So the first one on your hook and then this one. Then we're gonna go down here. That's three, put it through the loop on your hook. Go up to the top, four, put it through the loop on your hook. All the way down to the end and this is five and this is six. Making sure that you count every every stitch, including the one that you started with on your, on your hook, because you want to make sure that you work all 46 stitches, okay? Um, so that you don't, uh, if you miss one of these little loops, it's going to unravel your row. So I'm going to keep going, pick that up, seven, eight, nine, ten, doesn't matter if you go over top or underneath, all you got to do is pull it through the, through the um, loop on your hook. So However you get that job done, it's, it's fine. Either way works. Okay, so keep going until you get to the end. Um, and I'll show you my last two stitches, okay? All right, so I'm at the end. And this one should be 45. If you've got all your stitches, 45. And this one is 46. And there you go work that then you're going to take your tail yarn over and put it through that last one and pull on it okay now this side is um is the end of the project so the waist yarn comes off very very easily and i already did the other side um not thinking that 
I've got all other all my sides done on my other tubes too but you can look down in my videos on my channel to see how to remove waste yarn from um, from your project if you need to, to know how if you need to see that in greater detail but what you're gonna do I'll just give you a little explanation um, when it's at the end of the project, it just pulls off easily like that. When it's at the beginning of the project, um, it's a little harder to get off. So you have to roll up that edge, pinch the stitch on the left and pull out that very top row. Then you go down a little farther, pinch that very top stitch, pull out the very top row um, until you get around the first row and pull out the very first row. And then you will you can release the, the whole project just as easily as this or the whole waist yarn just as easily as we did on this side, okay? Um, there's also another method that you can use that you put in. Uh, well, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, you can you can go look on my video down, click on videos and check down the channel. And there's different ways. Like you can um, put a little um, one row of a different color yarn before you attach your your working yarn at the beginning. And then all you have to do is go to the side here and pull that one out. So we are going to talk about it, I guess. <laughs> Pull that one out and then all the, the waste yarn above it will come with it. So um, that's another option to do, okay? So we're going to uh, grab our panels. I already did one for you, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, this is what the braided join looks like. It's beautiful. I, I just love that join. I um, think that it's absolutely gorgeous and it really adds uh, texture and beauty to your projects. I think it's great, okay? So we... Um, when you when you do this, we have marked the front of our project with um, with a stitch marker so that we know once we finish this this one seam here and we grab our next panel, we want our we want to make sure that this side is facing up. Okay, so that when we when we put our panels together like this to join the next one, the third one, um, our braid is on the same side because if, if you put, put this over um, it does look different the braided join on the other end is um, it goes it's indented a little bit and it's, it's not as prevalent in it and so there there is a right and a wrong side to that okay so we want to make sure that we're starting on the same end as we did over here so that our V's are going like this okay instead of like this um, so when we start down here and we go up then our V's that the braid that this makes goes like um, in that direction. So then we want to start on the same end with every panel that we attach, okay? Now I um, sewed these two together. I had the tail here and I sewed these two together um, because I was gonna, gonna do, do something a little bit different <laughs> on this panel, which we won't get into because we're not going to do it, but I couldn't take it out, take it apart. So we're gonna just leave it like that. Um, you'll have, it'll be like you have two panels that you're putting together like this and you'll have a tail here and you're going to end up sewing that first stitch closed anyways because I always start on the second stitch okay so you're going to put your panels together like this you're going to make sure that the wide part of your v of your stitch see I've got my hook in the stitch there the wide part is going to the left okay so this is is where I joined at the top I'm going to get into that first stitch that's underneath it and then I'm going to go across to that stitch that's right across from it and go into there and, and you'll figure this out as I go a little farther down to show you okay and then you're going to take that stitch and put it through then you're going to I always count two I think if you count by twos then um you know it's easier until you get the knack of it and then you can once you once you do have done this a few times you can sail through it like seriously but so this is the stitch that this is coming out of okay so I count that one two and I grab this next one put it through the loop on my hook this is where it came out on this side so one two I'm going to grab that bar in between the stitch pull it through that loop on my hook okay so then one two because so essentially you're missing you're missing this one and you're going to the second one okay and you're going to put that through the loop on your hook one two one two one two you're going to follow that same row all the way down so every once in a while you're going to stop and you're going to just line it up like this and then if you pinch it it stays and uh it's yeah you'll get the knack of it it's, it's a feeling that you get to hold it i've um we've seen some people comment in my group that that they have a hard time holding this together and they lose their row but but you really you really shouldn't if you're pinching it and you're holding it up there then then it shouldn't be a problem and if you made sure that you but if it's a problem that's okay <laughs> i don't want to say that um but but if you once once you get going on it and you've tried it a few times 
you will get it. Just don't think too hard and don't make it harder than it actually is, okay? You just want to make sure that your rows line up like this. And one, two, and you're going to go into there, pull up that stitch, and you're going to go across back and forth just like this all the way down, making sure that you stay on this same track, okay? Meaning that you, you don't twist and go over to this row. You stay on this same row all the way down, okay? I'm going to get to my color change here. Okay, and then I'll let you go at it. If you've done the exact same amount of stitches on each panel, then it will work out, okay? Then it's going to work out and it's going to line up um, and it's going to look like that when, you, when you've got it done. So it looks beautiful. Um, if you've done, if you've been diligent and you've done the exact same amount of rows on each panel, then when you, I always start on the second stitch up at the top here. Um, so that's why this, having tied this off earlier didn't, uh, didn't affect anything. Um, but I always start on the second stitch on this side and the second stitch on that side. And then if you're careful when you count, you will end up exactly where you need to be on the bottom. Now, sometimes you take your work off your machine and you, st and we always stretch it in widthwise and lengthwise. And then you put it on the bed or on the floor and you say, oh, one's way longer than the other. That's because of the tension that you use to stretch it. Um, if you did the same amount of rows, then they are the same amount of rows. <laughs> And so once you start sewing them up together, um, it will all it will all pull together and it will all work out. You don't have to go and cut tubes to to be the right you know different size. Just make sure that that you have the right number on each tube as you make it. Um, don't just you know wing it and say oh that looks like it's the same length. You make sure it's the same length. So count your rows. If you have a center one, it doesn't have a counter. Get a counter or use a, a hand counter um, and count every fifteen or twenty rows and mark it down. Um, just so you are sure. Um, it's worth it to take that time to do it properly and to have a nice product at the end, okay? So you're going to keep doing this all the way down the row. And when we get to the end, all you're going to do is the same thing you did up here. You're going to get to the end and then there's going to be one loop left on your hook. You're going to take that that end that you have the the end that you have at um, the tail that you have at the end of your thing you're going to loop it through that loop and you're going to tie it off in a knot and you're going to hide the end and you will have a beautiful finished project you can take this off okay so you're going to go ahead really that's all there is to it you're going to go ahead and finish this all the way down the row tie it off and then do your second panel this is my second panel um, or my, my second row that I'm doing, but it's my third panel that I've attached. Um, and so you're going to do that all the way down, finish it off, and then I'll see you back. All right, so now it's time to make the pockets. Um, and we're going to make those on our Addy 22 needle machine or your Centro 22 needle machine. I'm going to use the lightest color now. That's the one that we're using the least in our um, project. That's uh, the color that will go around our neck basically. Um, but I'm going to make my pockets in that color. So for me, it's that light colored, um, what's the name on it? It is, let me just tell you. Boy, my legs are, um, it's topaz. My legs are putting a glare. <laughs> I put shorts on because I was running around the house and I was hot and I put shorts on and my legs need to have some sun. <laughs> so sorry about that. Anyways, we're going to use waste yarn for this. So we're going to bring our last white, our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder. We're going to put our um, waste yarn in doing a long tail cast on. So behind that first black in front of the second, behind and in front all the way around. Now this is no surprise to you because we did this for each of our tubes um, that we made for our, our scarf, okay? And then I'm going to knit five rows or seven rows somewhere in there of waist yarn. I'm gonna do a couple more because I saw one of them slip there. I'll do two more. Now we have to do four of these in total because I'm choosing to use 
the uh, 22 needle so that I can have a braid down the middle of my pocket, okay? So we're gonna cut that off. We're gonna open our yarn feeder. We're going to turn it to zero. We're going to add our yarn. All right, so I added my yarn. It's coming up in this next clip um, in the light color um, because that's what I had decided to do. And I actually made the two pockets. I, I attached one and I decided I didn't like that color on, on the brown. So um, I went ahead and I made uh, four more of the forest green and that's what I uh, that's the color I'm going with so um, go ahead and continue following the the clip on how to make the pockets um, but you decide whether you want to use the light color the dark color or um, the mid color um, I choose chose the green the mid color and that's what I'm going to be showing you in a little bit um, how to how to attach that to our to our project okay so I just want to just stick in a little clip here telling you that I did go ahead and change color Oops, got a dirty sleeve there. And we're going to crank out 20 rows. Okay, so that's one. Let's get that down over top of those little red needles. I could see that was giving me a little bit of a um, hassle there. Okay, so we're going to do 20 rows of our working yarn. Once I get it loosened from the ball. Do you guys ever get like a sore elbow? Like just right in here, right in here. Can I get that in the camera? Um, that's where the bend of my elbow is, and it's right in here. Um, I've just been finding this week that is it ever sore as I crank this thing, and I bet you I need to have a little bit of a break. <laughs> bet you I've been like knitting too much, okay? But that's okay. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, then we're going to see that last white and the first black coming around and I see my marked divider. So then I know I'm at the end. I just finished 20 rows. I'm going to cut this off, but I'm going to leave a tail. Um, quite a bit longer of a tail um, for sewing. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my waist yarn. And I'm going to crank out as many rows that you're comfortable with. I always do seven or eight. Okay. So for again, I grabbed a piece that's already been used and it's not very long, so I might not get that many, but that's okay. I already have enough. Yeah, I think I'm there. So I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to put that between my last white my first black and take it off my machine this is half of one pocket okay so you need to make four of these okay ay, 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 ay. okay you're gonna make four of these I'm gonna stretch it out now you're gonna go ahead and you're going to I hope you can see this in this camera here um, you're going to close these ends like we did our tubes, okay? So you're going to put your stitch markers in this in this one and in this, this first one over here. And then you're going to look for the one that has two and you're going to take the top one. And then you're going to put it in half. And because there's 22 stitches on here, you're going to count around to 11 and 12. Put your hook in number 12 and then pick up 11 and put it through and go back and forth until you close that off. You're going to close off the other end as well, just like we did um, the tubes. Uh, just like we did the other this end here, just like I am just explained to you. Okay, making sure that these tails are on the right. There we go. Okay, and you're going to do that times four. Waist yarn, 20 rows of working yarn, waist yarn. Close both ends with a flat seam. And when you're done that, then you can come back and see me. All right, have fun. All right, so we have these four little cuties. Let me see if my lighting is good enough here. There we go. These four little cuties and we're going to take two of them let me put two of these aside and we're going to do the braided join just like we did on our on our um larger panels okay so i'm going to line up my rows so that i have the wide part of my v facing down i never do the first one i always use this to on a needle to do the first one so i'm not going to go into there i'm going to go into the second one here and then I'm going to go across to the second one on this side, pull it through the loop on my hook, okay, making sure that I have that lined up nicely, 
Okay, then I'm going to count one, two, just like I did on the bigger panels. One, two, and we're going to sew all the way down on this tiny wee little panel. Won't take long at all. Okay. I hope you are enjoying making this. And I'm confident that you're going to get a lot of use out of it or whoever you gift it to is going to absolutely love it. Okay, I have one left on each side or two actually. I have this one here and then I have that little one and I have that one and the little one. Okay, so I'm going to just, I'm going to just do one. Okay, one on this side and one on this side. And then I'm, I made it to the end. So I'm going to yarn over, pull that through the loop, just like so. Okay. And then I'm going to put this on my hook, or pardon me, on my needle. And I'm just going to grab that top stitch, just like that. Okay. And around to this top one. Tie it off in a knot. And then tie one more little knot. Okay. I want to make sure that the longest strand I'm leaving free to sew, so um, that's not this one, so I'm going to hide this. Just like that under the rim, and then I'm going to go back. Okay. And I'm going to cut that piece off. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide this one in like manner. I'm going to first, I don't like, you don't want to have this little opening at the top there. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one. That's why you like to have a tail on one side. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. And then I'm going to hide this tail here and I'm going to keep this one for sewing. Okay. So this long one will be for sewing. So go ahead and do that and then do it to your second panel. Um, and then we've got two of our pockets and it's going to be so cute to put them on. So go ahead and finish those up to that um, part. And then, um, it's not actually crooked. And then uh, we'll, we'll um, take it from there. All right, so I sewed one on already. <clears throat> and I've got the other one ready to uh, be placed. Um, but you're going to want to make sure that you have your scarf folded so that, that it's not twisted at the neck and that this is your, your front that's going to be meeting together, okay? Um, and then what I did is I uh, I attached, I like to start on this side and go around, so I attached a piece of yarn um, here and, uh, and began my sewing that way. Now I'm going to just move this over so you can see the other one. So this is, well, first of all, I'm going to just tell you, this is how I did it. I lined it up so, <clears throat> so that there were two full rows, that's one, and that's two between the braid and the side of the pocket, okay? And then from here, from the bottom, it's one, two, three, four, five, six stitches below. So I joined it in the seventh stitch up, okay? So that's how I, I made sure that it was uniform there. And then on the side here, it's the same thing. There were two, two full rows, one and two, okay? So you you can figure out where you want your placement to be, but when wherever you put it, just make sure that that um, it's even right across because when you sew this on, um, depending on how much tension you use uh, with your with your um, needle and your thread uh, yarn as you go along, sometimes you can you can go at a slant and not even realize it. And I tell you that because I had to take it off because I was up a slant by one stitch and didn't realize it because I was not being as careful as what I should have been. So now what I'm gonna do for the second panel um, in the second pocket, let me just move this light over here as well, okay, is I attached a little piece of um of yarn to the each corner and I tied it in the position that I want it to be so I've got my two rows one two and then I went into the seventh stitch from the bottom there um, I did two rows over here and went into the seventh stitch from the bottom there and then I, I um, worked it up so that I tied that up straight and then I'm going to begin sewing oops begin sewing on this side here okay and it's going to just be a simple seam I'll show you all. I'll, I'll uh, thread my needle here. So I've got my second row here. I've come down one, two, three, 
pardon me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I went into the ninth stitch um, there, so I, I know where to begin. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is where I'm going to go. But because I want to make sure that I have two full rows here, okay, I'm going to go beside that row and into that stitch there. Pick it up and come up through the corner here, making sure I don't snag my yarn there, okay? And that's how I'm going to attach that one, okay? So you want to make sure that you're going um, through the same. Let's see, is this on the camera here? If these are the two rows I'm missing, you're going to go into the center of the stitch of this row, okay? So you're going to always go into there, pick up. I don't like this bent needle for this project. So there we go. Pick up and then take the stitch that's on the side there. Just like that, okay? And then pull it through. And you're going to pull it snug, but you're not going to pull it so tight that you're going to pucker it. Then I'm going to follow that same row down going in the middle of that stitch, picking it up and going down to this next stitch there. And I'm that's how I'm going to sew it on all along. Okay, down into that stitch, pick up a stitch and go down. Okay, so I'm going to follow that row. So then I have two full rows of stitches or when this is bent over, you, you don't see this half a row here, but I have... Um, wait, let me see. My eyes are being trailed off by this braid. I have this row and this row of stitches. So then we've got our two full rows of stitches, but you want to make sure that you don't pull on this so tight um, that when you get to the bottom here, you have you have a lot of, um, you don't want any puckering there that you've got to fix, okay? So go along, do a couple stitches, then smooth it out. Go back in, do a stitch. Pull on it, smooth it out, and continue to go down the row like that. Otherwise, you're going to have a wonky pocket, okay? This one here is almost perfectly straight <laughs> because I took my time and I did it, and I, I did one stitch, then I straightened it out, and then I did another. And it still doesn't take long because it's a small pocket, right? Some pocket shells um, that you see um, have their pocket the exact same size as the, as the width here. I didn't want that. I wanted a smaller pocket, so um, that's... And it's, you know, it's just beautiful. You can you can still fit your Kleenex in there or your chapstick or whatever you want to stick in there. And it's just really nice, but it doesn't add too much bulk because it's a smaller pocket. And that's really what I preferred. So go ahead and then sew along the bottom and then sew along up the top, making sure that you straighten this out so you have your two rows. Okay, because it's very easy to slip off of that row. Um, so go slow and, and keep your eye on, like if this is if this is the, the row that I'm going into for picking up stitches, then just keep your eye on that row so that so that you come along, like you come into here, then it's here and here and here, so that you're following that same row and then your pocket's gonna be straight, okay? So go ahead and finish that off. Um, and when you're done that, we're going to go on to a next part, okay? You're going to need your um, 4.0 um, millimeter hook. And you're going to uh, use the color of yarn of your choice. And then you're going to chain up 16. 16 was what I needed, but you're going to, um, that's four, five, six. You're going to measure it. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now, if you follow the same row count as me, it'll probably be in that general vicinity. It depends what your attention is as compared to mine. But um, I just put it underneath that, um, that button and then up to where I want it. It's going to go to the second row of my color change. So the second, so this is where I'm going to, going to attach it to the second row of brown just here. Okay. So you want it to, you want it to be, you want to be able to pull on it tight. You don't want it really loose. Okay. I want it tight because I want it to hold this, this button up and I want to have it um, so that when this button is being pulled up a little bit, it keeps this straight. Okay. So I did 16 and now I'm going to just bring this end over and I'm going to go into that first stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch to join. Okay. And then that one's going to be in the way, but that's okay. And then I'm going to chain up three, one, two, three. Okay. And then you're going to turn that so that you see the front of those stitches and you're going to single crochet into that second chain. So not this one, but this one, you're going to single crochet. Then you're going to single crochet into that next one. Oops. Just like that. Okay, and then you're going to go down to this uh, first stitch that you have there and you're going to slip stitch to join. Okay, 
So I'm going to slip stitch to join there, and you'll see I just have a little a little piece there that I can use to sew on. Okay. So now um, you're going to just take your uh, you're going to go into that next stitch. Sorry, that next stitch, and you're going to do another slip stitch just like that. Okay. And now you're going to yarn over and bring that through. Then you're going to cut off a tail. One long enough that you can work it back up to the top so you can sew it on, okay? And then I'm just going to pull that knot tight, just like that. And I've got my little piece there that I can um, that I can sew on up to there, okay? But I'm going to go ahead first and I'm going to hide this piece right here, okay? So you go ahead and hide that into your work once I find my needle that I dropped and then I'll meet you back. All right, so I hid that one, then I took this one, the longer one, and I just wove it um, like put it on my needle and took it up to the top there and then I pulled on it I pinched this side because I don't want to gather that but I, I pinched it and pulled on it so that that little slip stitch there would would come more in line and, and be flush and you wouldn't have a little jog out there okay so now I'm going to just bring this over to the corner here there's only two stitches in width but um, I'm just gonna do that okay and then you're going to put this onto your button I love these wooden buttons they're so nice and you're literally going to just pull it up until it's the second row you're going to have one row here that I like to see that color at the top and then we're going to just sew it on okay putting my hand underneath every once in a while because I don't want to grab this other piece when I do it and all it takes is three stitches really okay so sew that on make sure I didn't go through And then do one more right there. And I'm gonna grab that side stitch right there so that I, it looks more square at the top, just like so, okay? And that's how I'm going to attach that. Okay, I'm gonna tie off another knot and then I'm gonna hide that in between, okay? And then it's, well, I can do that now while I'm on here with you. Doesn't matter, just it feels like it's gonna take up too much camera time to do something that you know how to do <laughs> but anyways here goes I'm going to just finish that knot pull it through then I'm going to take this and hide it in there and go in between the layers pull it out just like so cut it off And we have added, where's my other one? We have added our buttons and our embellishment to our pockets and they are absolutely gorgeous. Now let's move on to the last part of our project, which is our wonderful fringe. Okay, so join me for that part and then we'll be done. All right, so I'm gonna put a fringe on the two ends and I'm going to use a piece of cardboard that is six inches wide, okay? Um, doesn't matter how long you make it, um, as long as six inches is wide. Um, it, my fringe is going to be a six inch fringe. Now, when you wrap it around, I'm going to start with one color. I'm going to use these two colors. Um, when you wrap it around, you just got to hold it and wrap. Okay, let me just wrap a few here. Hold it and wrap. Now, of course, because it's six inches this way and then you're going, going around, it's 12 inches. Um, your each length is going to be 12 inches. I'm going to actually cut this off. It's a little bit or start down here a little bit. Hang on. Hold on. Let me do that over again. I'm going to start closer down here. Then I don't have to wrap so weird. Okay. And I'm going to just go around and around and around. And each one of these um, yarn ends, when I cut it, is actually going to be 12 inches long because I'm going to do one cut. Okay. So if that's like that. Let's just say that's that's all we're gonna do, okay? Then we're gonna grab our scissors. Of course, we're going to do a lot, but I'll just show you um, quickly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna cut that end, and then it doesn't matter if you cut up here, it doesn't matter if you cut here or down there, you just need one cut. So I'm gonna take my scissors, and I'm gonna go along, and I'm gonna cut, okay? So then each one of these is 12 inches long, okay? I'm going to double that, I haven't decided whether I'm going to put two of the same color together or two um, different ones together, but then I'm gonna grab my work, hang on. Okay, so we're gonna grab our piece. This is the front, okay? Because you need to have the front up. You're going to take your crochet hook. You're going to put it from the back up to the front. You're gonna 
put your your um, fringe or your yeah your fringe in half so now it's back to six inches we're gonna pull that from the front or okay so we're coming from the back we're coming up to the front we're gonna pick up that that um, fringe we need a bigger Okay, so I, you need a bigger crochet hook to, for this so that you can um, actually pick up the, the double strand. So I'm gonna go from the back to the front. I'm gonna loop that around my hook and I'm gonna bring it through to the back, just like that. Then I'm going to put my fingers in that loop, take that end, so it's looking like that. Take that end, pull it through and tighten it. Now the reason why I do it from the back to the front is so this little bar that goes over the fringe is in the front. This is my front. That's the back. There is a difference in how it looks, okay? <laughs> and I always say it's the little details that make a difference, right? So then I'm going to take my next two. I might just stick with all brown. Actually, I probably will because I already know just by putting this on that, that I like the look of that. So I'm going to put that in half. I'm going to go over a row. You can look at the rows here. So if you want an easy way to, to follow it, okay? Um, so this row here, the stitches, the, the point of the V was going down. So I'm gonna go um, over to the next one where the point of the V is going down. So that's right here. And then um, right here and here and here and here. So one in every row, okay? So I'm gonna put this, this first one is gonna be a little tight, okay? And then I'm going to Grab those two, they're in half, okay? I'm going to pull it through. And you can either use your crochet hook or your finger, so you can wrap that around the hook. I find that awkward, so I'm not even gonna do it, okay? I'm going to take my fingers, put them underneath and up through that loop, grab those strands and pull, and then tighten them, okay? Now I've got two fringes put on. I'm gonna take two more. And I do not, if I find that one of these fringes like is shorter because that was the end, it, you know, I don't know why it turned out. The ones on the end are often shorter. Then I'm just gonna throw it away and I'm gonna grab a different one. But I don't go and tidy these up after. Like I don't go and make it straight. I like, I like the staggered look actually. So that was the, the row that I'm going into or that I was in. So I'm gonna, this is the wide part of the V. I'm gonna flip over to here. So those first two are gonna be a little bit closer. Then it evens itself out a bit better, okay? And I'm going to stick that through, come through. And I'm gonna finish that off. I'm going to do that all the way across. And if I have a big space like that, then I know that's too much. So I'm gonna stick another one in there. So. Um, what did I do? How come that's like that? Oh, because right here, this is a row right here that I missed. Um, this one is attached to this one and this is here, but because uh, because this is pulling on it, I never noticed it. So that's fine. You'll see that and you're gonna just put one in the middle there. So then you're gonna go and you're going to continue one in every row, okay? And if you want a few to fill in, you go ahead and do that. However, it looks nice to you. And um, you're gonna do that on both panels, making sure that your front is up and you're going from behind and coming up, okay? So that's how I put my fringes on. And so now, because I wrapped these around, each of these pieces was 12 inches long, just like I said, but because you put them in half um, to add them, then they're now it's now a six inch fringe again, okay? So that's how I put a fringe on. And if you need to see that in, in slower, um, different detail then, or more detail, then I have a video on how to add a fringe. So you can look for that on my channel, okay? So go ahead and do that and uh, then, once you have that all on, we'll be finished. So awesome job, my friends. Thank you for following along in this tutorial. I'll see you when I'm done.